Well, Blender has gotten pretty good at allowing us to do blockouts, quick shape modeling for organic characters like people and animals. Previously, this was mostly ZBrush and really expensive plugins, but now you can do it in vanilla Blender, it's pretty trivial. Uh, I have a video about this earlier on my channel, much older video, it's not very good, so here's a slightly better version from someone who is a lot more experienced. I'm going to show you the exact technique I used to model all of the characters in my adventure game prototype, because none of them are from an existing model, they're all modeled from scratch. So this is my startup file. It includes a reference head, which you should always have in your startup file if you plan to do any human modeling, and two balls. The ball in the middle and the balls off to the side with a mirror modifier. These are just generic balls. They're just UV spheres with the detail level turned down a little bit. There are a few things that we're going to want to do inside of these spheres to set ourselves up for the shape modeling, the sculpting. So if we click on one of these and hold tab and move my mouse, you can see I get this nice radial pop-up. If you do not get this radial pop-up, go into your settings menu and turn it on, because this will save you a ton of frustration. It doesn't matter what mode you're in, sculpt mode will always be on the bottom, object mode will always be on the left, edit mode will always be on the right. This is such a huge help, because it means that no matter what mode you're in, you just have hold tab, move your mouse, you're in the mode you want to be in. If you're already in that mode, fine. If you switch to that mode, fine. There's no mucking about with like pressing tab and hoping that it gets you to the right mode or selecting drop downs. That's going to slow you way, way down. You do not want that. So turn on your tab drag, get yourself a nice radial pop up, and get to work. So here are the settings for our modeling, for our sculpting. Obviously, this center ball has x-axis mirroring turned on, as you can see, whereas the one on the side does not. That's the main difference. That's because it already has a mirror modifier, it doesn't also need to have an x-axis mirror. I've also set up dynamic topology to use brush detail 50%. I don't know why the default is what it is, but that default is terrible. You should change it and then save your new file as your default file so that you never have to change it again. That's pretty much it. You're ready to get started. So basically what you do, I have it set up so that if I look at it from the side, I can see all three balls. Well, two, I guess, if you want to be specific and pedantic. But basically all we do is duplicate the balls, move them into position for whatever we're trying to model, and we just do a quick little shape block out. So for example, if I wanted to create a character, I might create a head and a body, something like this, maybe put in a belly. Depends on how I'm feeling, you know how it goes. Uh, we can leave the neck for later or do it now, whatever we want. We could add in some arms if we'd like. Now when you scale on an axis, just like this z-axis like so, you can do whatever you want obviously, but you're going to want to apply all transforms or at least the scale transform because otherwise your modeling will be skewed and trust me you don't want that, it's really annoying. So you know, just Put the pieces in wherever you feel like they should go and get your basic shape right. Now I usually run with a uh, just a picture of the character so that my um, you know my proportions are correct, but not this time just because I'm just noodling around to show you what's up. All I'm doing is hitting Shift D to duplicate these and move them into place. And obviously we can look at it from the side and make sure that they are in what we would consider a good spot. and we could put in, say, a foot, and you might think, wow, this is your shape modeling, how brilliant. But the point is that once you have all of your pieces in place, you can then start to get serious, and getting serious involves, of course, sculpt mode. Ooh. So the biggest change, and this is not a new change, but it is the most important one, you can hold Alt and hit Q to switch which shape you're modifying. And this is by far the most important part of your process. So memorize that. Alt Q. It's like the opposite of quitting. I don't know why it's Q, but it's pretty easy and it works quite fast. See? Now, the thing we are always planning on using like 99% of the time is the elastic deform brush because this lets us just grab whatever we want and turn it into the shape we need. <coughs> Excuse me while I cough into the mic. 
and then we can just switch and keep bringing in these character uh, elements to the size we want. And now obviously if our character has something like a skirt or whatever, we could bring them in as well. Let's go ahead and say that our character does have a skirt, just so I can show you one of the other brushes. If we go back into object mode, oh, let's give her hair instead of a skirt. Let's go ahead and chop her head into size first. So if we go into our head here, you can see it's ball shaped. You probably don't want a ball shaped head, not unless you're doing some cartoon modeling. So what we can do is we can use this brush here, line project. This is a super useful brush for cutting pieces off like so. From there, you can then go back into your uh, elastic deform and just shape them into what seems like it might be a head. Now there are plenty of make makeshift heads, heads from other projects that you can just take and make your own. Feel free, it's really not that hard to model a head though if you have a reference head, which we do. You do have a reference head, right? There's free ones all over the place, just go find one. All you need is something that shows you things like Oh, exactly how is this part of the face shaped? Because you don't tend to memorize that stuff. Anyway, if we wanted to give them something like a bob cut, we could always duplicate this, bring it down, scale it up. And there's a Bob Ross cut, not quite what we want. So we'll go into our sculpt mode and again, line project. This is the basic setup for basically everything. This is fundamentally how we do our uh, all of our work. Now, of course, we do want to be able to add many more details. The whole point of the block out is that you want to have all of the shapes you're going to need for your character. Whether you plan to do your retopology now or after your detail sculpting, either way, you're going to want to have the base details worked out. This is nowhere near enough detail work. If we tried to turn this into a final character, we would run into all sorts of annoyances. For example, there's no neck, there's no shoulders, there's no clothing pieces, like maybe a belt line or something like that. These are all things that you're going to want to consider when you are doing your work. And of course you can use whatever brushes you want if you decide that you want to use other brushes, obviously. But the point here is that we would like to make sure that before we settle in for our next phase, whether that is detail modeling or retopology, we want to have all of the basic details in place so that our character feels complete. And that includes things like this. We need a neck. That wasn't the, <laughs> that was the exact opposite of what I had intended to do, but that's fine. And obviously, once you start to put these pieces in place, you can clearly see how your original shapes might not conform correctly. So that's why you want to have all your details, because your details will shape your, your overall character and allow you to figure out what you actually need to do to get all the shapes to flow together. I'm not going to go into full detail here. I just want to show you how easy it was to block all of this out. Now, another thing we've done here is uh, we're not using our dynamic topology, but we can. All we have to do is hit Control D to turn it on. Boom. Now we can do dynamic topology, but that only works for certain brushes and our elastic deform is not one of those brushes. Neither is pinch or draw sharp for some reason. Uh, pinch it is actually, but draw sharp it isn't. I'm not sure why. But draw, we can do it with draw, see? Now the joy of having this set up as brush detail 50% is that you can zoom in and out to get the detail you need at whatever scale you need, and it'll always just adapt to whatever zoom level you've got. This is definitely the best choice for blocking out your characters swiftly. Now if you wanted to go for some kind of final topology, obviously you'd probably do something a little more careful, but in this case we are just doing the quick little block out so we don't need to worry about that and you can just create the character to look like however you want. In this case, it looks like we got some kind of, I don't know, uh, just uh, a child in a village somewhere maybe, who knows. But whatever we wanted to do, we could do that here. We can switch over to the hair, turn dynamic topology on again, because you have to do it every time you switch, and maybe create some hair strips or something using layers, whatever we'd like, right? But you can see that dynamic topology and layers don't get along. Grr. Well, so that's the sort of thing you have to work with when you're worried about this sort of stuff and trying to get it to work. Still, it's much easier than, say, painstakingly trying to model this all out of one block, right? 
So we can just build whatever detail level we want, and then maybe then we can go in with our layer. We could also do some final topology and then um, you know remap it, re remesh it, and then go in and do this with a with a multi-res subdivide, but we're not going to work on, on that. That's beyond the level that we want for this particular little video still. You can see that this is pretty easy to put together whatever shape we want. And this does eventually turn into something pretty decent if you are pretty decent at it. Uh, it's one of the situations where it's easy to get a little bit depressed by the fact that you're just shaping shapes. But those shapes turn into your character. If you want to see the sorts of characters you can get with this, my adventure game tutorial videos are full of characters that I made using this exact technique, and while they are not great, I am not a professional character modeler. That's a hobbyist grade character, and it looks fine. It took, takes me about two hours per character. It's super fast. Not two hours to block it out. Two hours from nothing to rigged. Once you get used to this, it's super fast and super easy. I do, however, strongly recommend that you have an image of your character as a reference image right here in Blender, because otherwise you will probably end up getting the proportions wrong. For example, this person's arms look awful because I don't have any reference arms in place, so I just kind of winged it and it turned out very silly. But that's why you do this. You can then change exactly where things are and try and make them feel a little bit better, uh, you know, go in and sculpt whatever needs to be sculpted, smooth things out by holding shift. Just have some fun with it. Have the character you want to have. That's it. Have a good one.